when I first got in the league, there's a lot of tough guys, at least from my perspective, because I, once again, I considered myself the lowest on the totem pole and I had to learn, you know? So I looked at every experience as a learning experience. Um, physically, it was a much more physical game than, than what it is today, you know? Uh, you couldn't walk across the lane without getting checked, you know? Or the, the screens, you know, illegal screens holding. You always had to pay a price. You know, be it if you were aggressive and you were a gun hole guy and you go in, you go in with the understanding that I'm going to get hit. I'm going to pay the price, but, you know, that's part of the game. You know, I'm not going to be afraid to go inside. Those are types of things that, you know, these kids don't even have a clue of how you know, we had to grow up or how we had to play. The people that influenced my basketball skills you know, when I was growing up as I was watching the NBA, uh, Walter Davis, uh, Dr. J, uh, David Thompson. Dr. J style uh, it was something that I absolutely loved because of the way he can handle the basketball with his one hand. He can move the ball. You know, I had big hands. So in terms of being able to control the ball and uh, be creative with the ball with, uh, with your hands, to me that was, uh, that was intriguing because very few people have big hands. Are there rules to talk in trash? I only talk trash to people that I knew, my friends, Patrick Ewing, Bird, Magic, those type of guys. But um, I never talk trash to people that I didn't know or people I'm just meeting. And if they did, my game always did my talk and I never say anything. So this can be something you probably, you probably could print. You know, I'm playing in my, uh, my camp against O.J. Mayo. He was a top high school kid coming out. And I, didn't, I never met him first time. In front of my camp, he starts this thing about, uh, you can't guard me, you can't do this. You know, I got my campers here, so I obviously I can't really go where I want to go because of my camp. So I stop the camp, send the kids to, to bed. We go back to playing. And he starts this whole thing, you know, that you can't guard me, you can't do this. And then finally I just let him, I said, look, dude, you, you, you may be the best high school player, but I'm the best player in the world. So from this point on, it's a lesson. And from that point on, it was a lesson. He never won a game. I posted him up. I did everything. If I can ever show you that film, and if you can ever ask him that, ask him about the thing that happened at my camp. I don't consider that trash. I consider that fact. <laughs> you call it trash. <laughs> you got to be very competitive. You know, I think a lot of my defense is because of my competitive nature is that I don't want you to outscore me, you know, or I don't want you to score a certain number of points on me. Gary Payton and I had, had an interesting competitor. Uh, you know, he's supposed to be the glove. And the media made a little bit of a splash, and then the next thing you know, we're playing against him in 95-96 for the playoffs. And the whole thing was Jordan against the glove. I mean, he, he was good at defending, you know, me to get the ball, but once I got the ball, I felt like I always had the advantage. So, you know, it wasn't really a problem to me. He's a Hall of Famer now. I think he's uh, very deserving of it. But we did have our battles. If I was in my prime, who would I want to play one-on-one -on -one with? Um, that list is very long. Start off with Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Kobe Bryant in his prime, LeBron in his prime, D. Wade in his prime, Melo. That's a good start. Yeah. I don't think I lose. Other than Kobe Bryant because he steals all my moves. Ah, uh, no. I'm not a Twitterer, I'm not a twerker, I'm not a Facebooker, I am a you know, nothing. I'm old school. What is twerking, by the way? <laughs>